Welcome to the Life Makeovers Podcast. My name is Cindy D. Whitmer, and I am the Midlife Makeover Coach, helping you turn your midlife into your best life one step at a time. Through powerful conversations, my own midlife roller coaster story, and over three decades of helping people transform their lives through counseling and coaching, I am on a mission to help you create your own definition of success and happiness. Thank you for being here. Hey, everybody, it's Cindy here. Welcome to the Life Makeovers podcast. Thank you so much for being here. I am the Midlife Makeover Coach, helping you turn your midlife crisis into the best years of your life. And today I want to share a story with you about my step-grandparents. I, my parents divorced when I was a teenager, as some of you may have heard me talk about. And my father remarried um, a, year, a year later. And so I inherited a whole step family. And I really, uh, really adored my step grandparents, my stepmom's parents. Uh, their names are Dale and Nina Nelson. And they were, they were pretty cool. This is back in the eighties and they had one of those camper vans and we'd go on little day trips and overnight trips and they'd take us to interesting places and we'd all camp together and in the mountains and go to the beach. And, and my step grandma Nina always packed yummy snacks and we'd stop along a beautiful roadway and have a little snack to break up the trips and, I don't know. They were just fun people. And Dale was certainly someone who liked to uh, to uh, tell jokes and, and poke fun and, you know, be silly with us, too. And and they were just very uh, they were loving people in many ways and very they had a faith they shared together that I think kept their marriage strong for many, 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 many years. I think they were married maybe 75 or 76 years when he died and then she died several years later. But anyway, the reason I'm bringing them up is because sometime when he was, I mean, it was years and years after I first came into their lives. I don't know. I think he was in his eighties, maybe. I mean, he was definitely, they were definitely up there in age and they were on one of their road trips, the two of them. And they stopped at a rest stop and he was hit over the head with a hammer. And then his wallet was stolen. And, you know, I shudder to think, I, I don't know how he even lived through it, but honestly, I don't remember the injury being a very big deal to tell you the honest truth which is shocking, I know, because you'd think that would kill somebody even possibly, and, and maybe it would have been a different spot. I don't know where he was hit exactly on the head, but it was with a hammer, and his wallet was stolen. And when I spoke about that with him later, he did not focus on the pain of being hit. He did not focus on you know overcoming the injury. He did not complain really about anything. The only thing, you know, he lost a lot. He carried hundreds of dollars with him. He had credit cards too, I'm sure. You know, all that, had to replace his driver's license, all those things. What he focused on was, he said, you know, the only thing that really bothered me about the whole incident was a picture of Nina and I that I had been carrying for over 50 years in my wallet, you know, was taken. And I've always carried that picture of us with me wherever I've gone. And that's really, that was really all he said about it. And I thought, wow, I, I was just stunned. First of all, I loved the sentiment that the only thing he really missed and, you know, felt couldn't be replaced was that little picture. But also it told me about the power of what we choose to focus on and think about. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So I have read a book called The 
Force and Miracles Made Easy by Alan Cohen. It's a spiritual practice. The Course in Miracles is a spiritual study. It's non-denominational. It's, you know, it represents no particular religion or anything. But one of the things that is in that book, Alan says, if you're hitting yourself on the head with a hammer, it would feel better to stop. But why not just not hit your head with a hammer in the first place? And I thought, oh my gosh, that is brilliant. And one of the ways that we we hit our head in the hammer, so to speak, metaphorically, is to choose thoughts that feel really rotten. We choose thoughts that actually hurt. Our poor thinking, our negativity bias, our, you know, detrimental self-talk, all of those things are like hitting our head with a hammer because they hurt. So I want you to think about this with me today and ask yourself, how are you choosing to hit your head over the hammer with your mind? Okay. With your thought, your thinking. So remember that humans are creators by nature. We are all creative people. It doesn't mean we're all like artsy creative, but we humans are wired to create. And what all creativity in the human experience starts from thought. Thought comes first and then comes, you know, manifestation or create, you know, creation of something. The, if those of you that are watching on YouTube, the, these earrings I'm wearing were first in somebody's mind. They had a vision of them before they created them. Um, and we create our experiences by how we think of them too. It's often, it's not what happens to you because two people can experience the same thing, even a tragic, what we might call tragic thing, like uh, a tornado flattening their home or receiving a cancer diagnosis, or someone they love dying. You know, two people can experience the same thing, but have completely different thought processes and, re and emotional reactions to them, which will uh, determine the direction of the experience that they're having and how that rolls out over time. So, so I may have told you this before, but I'm not sure. I've had, you know, this is like the 180th podcast episode or something. And plus I teach all the time and have over 300 YouTube videos. And so I, I can't remember always what stories I've told you and what ones I haven't. But this is a really nice illustration of the power of our thoughts. So years ago, about eight years ago, um, around this time, I was to take a mission trip to Africa. And I part of the requirement of going to Africa was to be able to pull two suitcases, 50 pounds, full of 50 pounds of materials and supplies and things behind us in the airport. Every person going needed to be able to pull these two suitcases. And four months before that, trip was to take place, I took a freakish fall on the cement and I shattered my left wrist. I had to have surgery and so forth and so on. And so I was told at the time of the surgery and so forth and the beginning of treatment, you need to count on a year to help you uh, to help you completely heal and restore the use of this wrist. And you may never completely restore how it was before the accident, but you, you need to count on a year. And I had a cast that went all the way up, you know, past my elbow and it was on for so long that my arm atrophied. And so when they took the final cast off and so forth, I could not even hardly move my elbow, straighten my elbow or move my fingers or anything. I'd atrophied just terribly. And they told me then, of course, too, that, that to count on that taking months and months to be healed. And I knew 
I could not drag two 50 pound suitcases in Africa with an atrophied arm. And I, so I told the doctors and the physical therapist and everybody involved in my medical team, I said, I don't, I don't have a year. I'm not going to take a year to heal. I'm going to do this in less than four months so I can go on this trip. And they were like, well, you know, that's a great thought, but, you know, da, 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 da. they really protected me. They wanted to protect me from thinking that was possible. But I insisted on believing it was possible in my mind. I chose this thought because the thought of not being able to go on this mission trip was painful. That was a painful thought, a disappointing thought, a frustrating thought, a, a just a very, very difficult thought for me to think. It hurt like if I was hitting my head with a hammer. And so I shifted my thinking to what I wanted to have happen, what I believed was possible, and put all my focus there. And so, you know, and the long story short, I was able to do it. Like I did double and triple the work in my physical therapy process. My physical therapist was on board with me and she said, okay, you know, we're going to do whatever we have to do. She had me take more pain medication to come into my appointments so she could push harder and press harder and bend more and, you know, everything without me being in total agony. And then I did double and triple the exercises um, at, at a pace, you know, double and triple of what she would have normally taken me through. And so uh, I was able to do it now. So, uh, and that all felt really good. It felt really, really good. So that's the other thing is you want to think properly and then feel really good. So whatever you can do to think properly, to feel good, feel all the yummy feelings we want to feel, the better off you're going to be. And then your actions will feel more inspired and lined up to support what, what you're focusing on and how you want to feel. So, um, <clears throat> so really all of life is lived, you know, in two columns. Okay. There's the love column and there's the fear column. So the love column is all the yummy things we want to feel, right? We want to feel happy and trust. We're tr like we can trust people. We want to have faith. We want to feel excitement, um, empowerment, courage, confidence, joy. Um, you know, just all those wonderful things. Hope, optimism, optimistic. Uh, I mean, um, you know, all those wonderful things. And then the fear column is the, the things that are, you know, we don't really want to feel anger, frustration, disappointment, worry, hopelessness, powerlessness, um, uh, shame, guilt, regret. So at any moment you're living, you're existing in one or the other columns, right? And so are you in the love column or are you in the fear column? by which, by how you are thinking. So this is a practice, right? This is a practice that is going to really make your experience of midlife better. If you can get really good at this and all it takes is constant practice, just moment to moment. Because when you know about this, like I know about this, it's not a degree and I've just got it and now I'm done, no. It is lived out moment to moment to moment. So it is definitely a practice or a habit, whatever you want to call it. So think about life in those two columns, right? And if you're hitting your head on the hammer and hurting yourself with your thoughts, you're living in the fear column because your thoughts are going to feel debilitating. They're going to feel like they're keeping you stuck. They're going to feel like they're depressing you and that kind of thing. And so when you find yourself over there, you want to get yourself moved over to the love column as quickly as possible. So let's do a little practice here. So I'll tell you the truth. When I took that fall in, in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, back in 2016 and fractured my wrist, the first thought that entered my mind, I'm literally laying on the cement. It's just happened. My left 
wrist is mangled, looks like a freak show all its own. There's blood coming out of my, my face, my knee, my arm. Uh, you know, it's a, I'm in a total physical mess. And my first thought was, you are such an idiot. How could you be such an idiot? Because all I did was turn around and I tripped over one of those parking lot. Um, what do you call those things? The things you pull your car up to, you know, those little things and pull your wheels right up to. I tripped on one of those. I didn't see it. Kaboom, down. And it totally changed my the trajectory of my life. Totally. But anyway, um, so of course, my first thought was, how could you be such an idiot? And then I thought, no, you know, I'm not going to, I am not going to do that to myself. I'm changing my thought right now. And so the second thought I found was accidents happen sometimes. And I also was able to grab on a deep spiritual belief I have, which is everything is always working out for me. So when I thought to myself, compassionately, you know, accidents happen. Sometimes I gave myself that some compassion because yes, when we humans have accidents sometimes, and then I really got in the love column saying to myself, you know, everything is always working out for me. And so grabbing onto that belief that, you know, for whatever reason, this was going to move me forward in my life in, you know, the best way ultimately. And it certainly did. And that's a whole other you know, further story to unravel sometime with you if you haven't heard that story already. So let's practice some of these that I hear you saying in midlife. I am not enough. Okay, camera hitting you on the head there. I am not enough. You've all said it. You've all thought it, right? Most of you. And you could think of this in all kinds of ways. Maybe your spouse or partner has left you. Maybe your kids act like they hate you. Maybe your parents never gave you approval. Maybe you didn't get the job. Maybe, I mean, who knows what it is? Maybe, maybe you've tried and tried and tried to make something better or to repair a relationship with your siblings and it just, it just doesn't work. And so you think I am not enough. And it's like, no, there you are in the fear column. I want you to switch over and find a thought. Uh, maybe it's I'm doing the best I can. Uh, I am more than enough, you know, uh, things like that, right? Because then you're jumping over into the love column and you, it's not so harsh. It's not a hammer being hit on your head anymore. Uh, you may think a thought, um, <clears throat> she must hate me. Maybe somebody gave you a look. Somebody said something to you. Somebody had a tone. Somebody didn't show up. So you assume you make the thought, she must hate me. Boom, you're in the fear column, right? What else could you think that would be more loving about for yourself, toward yourself and others, the whole situation? Maybe someone acted hateful and you can say to yourself instead, she must have a, be having a really tough time to behave like this. That's a much more compassionate response and it's much more forgiving to you and to her. Maybe you think the country is divided. The world is unsafe. People are crazy. I mean, I hear people saying this stuff all the time, and you may believe those things too. But then we're in the fear column big time, big time in the fear column when we're saying things like that on this universal level. What if we could say to ourselves instead, you know, the world is a beautiful place or there are good people everywhere or, you know, we're all growing and evolving as, as best we can or anything like that or we can come together if we choose or you know um some of you say you're damaged goods at this point you've been through a lot in your lives by midlife and you think you're damaged goods maybe you've been abused maybe you're you've had chronic pain maybe you're you know whatever it is uh and what if you could say instead i am a healing i am healing or i am getting I am feeling better all the time, or I am, I am a healing vessel, or I am healed, um, or I am loved just as I am, or I am, you know, <laughs> anything. We want to stop hitting our heads with hammers with our thoughts and uh, choose, choose a better way to think. And this is a, a way to show grace to yourself. It's a way to show grace to others you know it's a it's a way to 
uh, navigate through difficult experiences in life, the things we don't want to have happen, just like I didn't want my accident to happen. Um, when you can use your mind to focus in a, in a better way, it helps, it can help you through anything. Um, when, if you're, you know, your kids are going away and you're about to experience the empty nest and you think, oh, they're never, they're never going to come home again, or they're not going to miss me. Or what if they never call me? And you start to have such deep heartache and start feeling that grief of that. That is putting yourself in the column of fear, in the column of, of anxiety and worry and, and depression. And instead, what if you could move over into the love column and say, oh, we're going to find out how to find our new normal as parents and children together, or uh, this is an exciting time for them. And I look forward to seeing, you know, how my children evolve as they, you know, grow into adulthood more and are, and they, we will always be connected even when we don't live together or whatever. You can find thoughts that can be just as true and probably more true than the ones you're dreaming up that are painful. Uh, so remember, remember that this is a practice. This is a moment to moment practice. And it is a choice. How you think about anything is your choice. And you wanna be careful about believing or adopting the thoughts of other people, just like me with the medical team. I mean, of course, they were trying to share with me statistically what to expect. They were, they were trying to help me in the process, but I didn't believe them so much to talk myself out of the possibility of a scenario that felt better to me that I really wanted to strive for. And that's how you can think through anything that's going on in the world or anything that's happened to you in the past, as you're rethinking it, reflecting on it, trying to grow from it and move beyond it, anything that you're currently going through now, anything, any, any, anything, even the worst possible things you think you could be going through, there are ways to move out of that fear column of thought into the love column of thought and uh, begin to feel more uh, hope-filled, and at peace in your life and happier. It really is a choice. So I want you to choose in favor of your own joy, in favor of this season of your life being as wonderful as it possibly can be. And to trust me that it can all start right up here in your mind with your thought processes. So stop hitting your head with that hammer Okay, no more hammerhead, no more hitting your head with the hammer. Um, and remember that a hammer is a tool that is used to connect and to build. Okay, it is used to connect and build. And I don't know about you, but I grew up going to uh, some church camps and we sang that song at, by some of the campfires and things that was, if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening, all over this land. I'd hammer out danger, I'd hammer out a warning, I'd hammer out love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. Ooh. <laughs> You're like, wow, now she's trying to sing on the podcast. But listen, you know, we can hammer out anything, right? We can hammer out anything. And so let's, if you want to be happier, if you want to be healthier in midlife and beyond, then start with your thinking and choose ones that we would all find in the love column and stay away from that fear column as much as possible and uh, use your hammer only to connect and to build. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Life Makeovers podcast. Please like, subscribe, and share this podcast with those that you think would also benefit from what we're doing here. And I will talk to you again soon.